Hello everybody and welcome to Fire Force Season 2 Episode 14 Anime Review. In this week's episode we infiltrate, well it wasn't really an infiltration, they just walked in through the front door. They infiltrated Hygiema Industries, we met presumably the next pillar. Uh, I say met, we've actually have seen him before which was pretty wild. And we met a sadistic child beating psychopath. That, that's a thing that happened. Pretty crazy. It was another solid episode. I'm really enjoying this season. It's surprising, honestly. But um, anyway, let's jump into the episode, see exactly how everything went down, and do this thing. We open up with Vulcan making some contraption. Not too sure what it was he was making. Lisa was there helping out as a as a good assistant. Assistant? We'll go with assistant. Uh, Shinra, not Shinra. Vulcan is like, let's make Hajima pay for what they did to her. And Shinra's like, yeah, dude, let's do that. And then Arthur is like, Shinra, fight me, bro. You were at a, a facility, a Hajima facility for many years. You might be a spy. And Shinra's like, yeah, of course, because I'm the spy. They scrap a little bit because, of course they do. Uh, and then we see he remembered basically how not good it was at the facility. They weren't treated like people. They were like guinea pigs and lab rats. They, you know, not a, not a great environment to spend most of your early years in. I'm sure you'd agree. Um, and then Lick shows up and is like, guys, I have something important to talk to everyone about. Could you gather them in the meeting room, please? And Shimmer's like, yeah, sure, dude, whatevs. Uh, yeah, so that happened. I wonder what it is he's got to say. I mean, I think we all sort of guessed what it was he had to say, but hey, it's nice that it finally happened. I guess I'll talk about this now because I, I don't think I have a better place to talk about it. The new opening. It's pretty fire. Don't think I like it as much as Spark again, but I mean, we're... We're still, it's the first time it's been heard, I'm sure in like three weeks. I'll be like, yeah, it's an absolute pop, bop, popping bop. But uh, no, I'm already like, it's pretty damn good. Fire Force hasn't had a bad opening. Uh, and I in include the Screamo one in there. The, well, it's not proper Screamo, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I think it's pretty good. I'm, I'm sure, I, is it up for, is the full version out yet? Who knows? Probably not. But when it is, I will be getting that. Yeah, let's, let's see what Licked had to talk about. Lick tells the crew that he was a spy for Hygiema all along, to which their response is, yeah, we know, you know, they, they're not surprised, and he's like, oh, um, uh, are you sure? You, he's really surprised by this fact, I guess they're smarter than he gave them credit for. Um, Hygiema, we're also looking for our dollar bursts, and they let Shinra go because they're idiots, I guess, that's the facility he was at. They let him go because they thought, he's, like, ah, he's not going to get out. And then he did, you know, so, um, stupid facility. However, after they let him go and he manifested out as all burst, they were like, right, we got to out up the ante. So their experiments turned a bit radical, turned a bit not safe, we'll go with. They were, they were pre they're pretty bad. We see one a bit later on. I, I hesitate to even call it an experiment, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, they decide... We can use this as an opportunity to get in and investigate. Because they want Shinra back. We can use this. Get in and investigate. Good plan. Shinra says... Shinra's totally on board with this plan. Because he wants to save the children as a as a good hero should and everything. Uh, Captain asks Lick, Hey, whose side are you on? Are you on Hajime's side or are you on the 8th side? And he's like... Both and neither, basically. Basically, whoever's closer to the troops, that's whose side he's on. He's like, you guys are closer at the moment, so I'm on your side. And then he's just like... That doesn't really answer the question. Uh, uh, honestly, seems like he's on Joker's side. Like, later on he says, like, Sorry, Joker, I might ditch you for the eighth. So, I guess he just casually, like, dismissed the question. To not say that, hey, I'm actually on Joker's side. Um, everyone, Captain is like, Shinra, you're not going on your own. That's stupid. We'll send everyone in. And the whole crew is going to be involved in this, which is nice to see. Uh... You know, nice to see everyone getting involved in some... I mean, it's, it's going to be human-on-human human fighting. We haven't seen any of that in a while. Uh, I mean, it was earlier this season, but it was still a while, damn it. Uh, there have been a lot of infernal... No, I mean, it was like last episode. I completely forgot about all that going on. But they don't really count. They're, you know, weak. I mean, like, strong people against people, if that makes if that makes more that makes more sense. And that... Well, we definitely got some strong people to fight, as we'll, we'll get to, like, right now. 
We get to a hygiene experiment with some guy and some kid. I'll tell you their names. The kid is Nataku. N Nataku? I'm checking because I want to be right, so, you know, behave. Nataku, yeah. Nataku is the kid. The dude, the, like, scary-looking dude is called Kurono. Kur Kurono. Kurono. I'm just going to say Kurono. Um, so, yeah, he's... He's a he's a character. We'll see, we'll get to more of Kurono like just a little bit, but yeah, uh, the kid Nataku is actually the one that Rekka used the bug on, and he was the one that didn't die. You know, remember that ages ago, like in season one, when Rekka remember Rekka used the bug, and he's that kid. He's the one. So good to see him coming back. Uh, Uncle Reaper is what uh, Kurono calls himself, which is a bit strange. But uh, I guess it's a little bit accurate. He says, you can go home when you're dead, basically. So it's like, oh. He's a bad one. He's a bad one, this one. Uh, show me your true power. He hears, Nataku hears Rekka's voice telling him to power up. And he shouts and stuff. So it's pretty, pretty weird. They're going to continue this experiment, even if Nataku ends up breaking. An example of the radical nature of the experiments have taken. They're not exactly valuing their subjects' lives. Also... I call it a test, they're just having uh, Kurono beat on him, basically. It's, it's pretty it's pretty uncomfortable to watch, I'm going to be quite honest with you. Uh, Kurono just enjoys beating up on him. He's, he's, a, he's a pretty messed up dude. We'll get to this a little bit more as well later on. He's really messed up. After the fight, uh, Nataku doesn't do very well, I think it's fair to say. He gets taken out on a stretcher. Kurono... Loves bullying the weak and loves beating up kids. And then he, he's like, research a dude, you're weak as well. I'll beat you up as well. You know, he's not exactly... He's basically here by vol vol voluntarily because he wants to beat up weak children. Which is all kinds of messed up. I'm sure you'll agree. Like, I don't I don't have much to say. It's very weird. Uh, he also wants to fight Shinra because he thinks Shinra is weak as well. So basically... It's, it's your typical shonen, everyone's more powerful than the last. I think they said at one point this dude's like as powerful as Shinmon of the Seventh. So, that's pretty powerful. Or like on a similar level, at least. Shinra knew of Kurono from when he was at the facility. Kurono was a messed up dude then as well. Good to see not a lot has changed. They get to the lab, the lab has moved because, you know, they're up to no good there. So they can't stay in one place too long. Makes sense, honestly. Like, you'd think someone... I'd say you'd think someone would investigate them, but they're behind, like, everyone. So, makes sense. Um, they... Security? Watching them pretty closely, basically, they say, you ain't getting out of here. I'm like, you you random security guards are gonna not gonna stop Shinra's fire feet. Like, I'm sorry, that's just not gonna happen. Shinra's got his rapid. He can go through time sometimes. Not time. Through, you know, black holes and all that, whatever that was. Yeah, I don't think some regular security guy is going to stop him somehow. Could be wrong on that, though. Uh, Shinra says that, hey, Licht, I'm not going to let you die. You're a valued member of the team. And Licht is like, oh, my heart's all a flutter. Um, Licht, however, Licht planned everything from the start. He made the report to get this opportunity to get the dirt on Hijima. He's So he's taking advantage of the 8th. He's taking advantage of Hijima. He's taking advantage of everyone. He's a smart dude, is, is old Licht. Um... Researcher so shows Shinra playing uh, some kids that are playing with this girl who's playing with puppets, which I presume, like, that's just... I, I did watch the trailer, so I presume puppets is something to do with her power. Could be wrong on that, but I'm going to assume she's a bad one. Because um, she was also watching them at the end. Uh, but no, but Shinra doesn't see Nataku, the kid that, you know, we talked about before, which is pretty weird. And the guy's like, oh, he's not here. Like, almost immediately, though, Shinra gets an adult link with Nataku, and he's like, well, he is here. They're bloody lying to me. What, what are you doing? You're lying. Uh, tells uh, Licks and like, alright, let's play along for a bit. And then we'll figure out a way to rescue the kid when we have an opportunity. Um, so yeah. And as I said, as they walk away, follow the dude. That girl, that woman, should say, is uh, watching them all creepily. She's like, oh, yes, I see you over there. What are you doing? I don't know. Don't know indeed. Shinra is in an arena-like room, and he recognizes this room. This is sort of like the testing room, I guess. Uh, and he's not a fan of this room. It reminds him of back in the days, how cold it was, how dark, how inhumane, how other word uh, that it is. He's fighting Kurono for, you know, a test, uh, because Kurono beating up people is a test for some reason. Um, 
He wants to beat... Kurono said, tells him, like, yeah, I wanted to beat you up when you were a kid. I I don't know what the... He's a messed up dude. He's, he's, uh, he's a character. Let's just go with that. They have a little fight. Kurono's got this black smoke, which I guess punches Shinra. Like, it's got the force of a punch, which is pretty cool. This ability is so, like, applicable to a load of things. He can react to Shinra's rapid because they reveal the smoke is also linked to his senses. So he gets like a heightened sense. So he can react to Shinra's super fast speedy move uh, as well. Uh, Shinra starts chaining attacks. So it's harder for him to react. He is still blocking them all though. But he is losing some ground. Uh, smoke then hardens into weapons. Like there's some kunai. There's some swords. Things that would definitely like uh, a kill, kill a man. So watch out for that. They have a little bit more of a tussle. He's got such a cool power, Kurino. Like, all that stuff there that I've just listed, he can do. There's probably other things they've not shown it do yet. But it's... Damn, it's cool. It's cool power. Uh, I think it's because, like, they said, like, his arm is, like... I forgot what they called it, but I guess it's, like, flame disease of the arm. I'm not too sure. It's probably a real disease that I just don't know. But, um... Yeah, he's, he's, he's got cool power. That's for certain. The professor... Not professor. The researcher says, all right... Let's uh, let's pack it in, that's enough for this test. And Kurono's like, nah man, don't want to. And he just fogs up the room. Uh, he's going to continue fighting Shinra, I guess. Uh, the alert is like, the room temperature is increasing. The room temperature is increasing. So I guess he's going to uh, burn the room down. Or like, I guess the smoke is hot. That probably makes more sense. Can't Shinra just like, do a tornado type thing? Like spin to like, disperse the smoke? Or is that not how it works? Like, that's my plan right there. Uh... You're free to use that one Shinra as long as it looks cool. And it will look cool. It's Fire Force. It always looks cool. But that was where we ended the episode. Episode preview for the next week's episode. Looks like things are going to get mental. It looks like the Hijima are going to start fighting the 8th. And then the White Cloud are going to show. It's called like three-way tussle or something. So there's going to be a big old three-way fight at uh, Hijima. And it should be cool. My guess is they've got to get Natsuku out of there somehow. Maybe Shinra could use the link to try and figure out exactly where he's being hidden. Uh, and then Kurono is probably going to be the final boss of this arc, I guess. It's looking good. It's looking good. Fire Force does its big old fights quite well. That is for sure. But hey, what was my favourite part of this episode? Enough about next week's episode. That's next week. What was my favourite part of this episode, though? Well, it's pretty obvious. So my favourite part of this week's episode was Kurono's power. Not Kurono himself. He's a sick, messed up freak. Uh, just his power, because it's so cool. It's so apl it's so ba it seems so basic. It's like, oh, he can make smoke, but then he can do so much with the smoke that they made it really cool. It's like, damn, I want the smoke power. The flamey feet, now nah, that's lame. Give me the smoke power that can make like weapons out of smoke that are that are actually you know hurt hurtful, hurtful, harmful is the word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool power. I'm, I don't have much more to add on that. It's very cool. When he was doing it, I was like, damn, he can do a lot. That's, that's cool. Presumably, he can also do some more things that we've not seen yet. So I feel like we've only seen... We haven't reached his final form yet, so to speak. Uh, and that is an exciting thought. Looking forward to next week's episode. Should be good. Uh, it, it looks good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm going to try and get Fire Force out for Fridays now because uh, I've got less stuff to do on a Friday. Um, but I don't know if I'll be able to because when it comes out quite late in the day for me. So, and i gotta, I got to go to bed, you know, i got to go to sleep. So I'm going to try my best if it's not out on Friday, Saturday morning as normal. Of course, my time is probably different for everyone else, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and stuff. For more reviews, that would help me out a lot. I will see you next week for another episode of this. Take care and bye guys.